Hey everybody, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, here's the taste test part of the video. If you can look over in the corner there, you can see that uh, the skipper, Ron, he's enjoying a little uh, peaceful bliss right now. And that's why I'm standing in front of the stove instead of him. Well deserved too. Well deserved, yes, it's been a long weekend. So we did a lot of uh, dry aging and in this series of videos that you're gonna see, we've cut up uh, a New York strip that was dry aged 42 days, a rib roast that was dry aged 42 days, and two tenderloins, pork tenderloins. So we've got a lot of meat here. So what I'm gonna do, about a half hour ago, I salted and peppered these. I have a regular, not dry aged, bought out of the store a couple days ago ribeye. I have a dry aged ribeye. I have a dry aged butterfly New York steak. And I have two butterfly dry aged pork tenderloins. I'm going to cook the steaks in the same pan so that, and it's basic, it's oil, salt and pepper, I got a little crushed garlic, so it's going to be very basic so that, and they'll be cooked together so that we'll get a real true comparison. So here we go. Oh, and to know when your pan's ready, flip a little water in there. that is hot oil right there. So here goes the ribeye, the regular ribeye. Nice. Here goes the New York and the dry aged ribeye. So the biggest steak is the regular sorbet. I have some garlic here, so I'm going to crush these cloves. I'm going to save this one for the pork. Get a little aromatic and a little flavor going in that grease. And I'm going to cook the ribeye. I want to be a little better than uh, medium well, so I'm going to go 130 in the ribeyes and the uh, uh, New York. I'm going to go 145, 150 in the pork, and the pork should be really good. I've got my thermopan here, so we'll know when precisely to take these off. Nice cast iron, heavy pan, holds the heat, so when you throw the meat in, it doesn't cool the pan down as much as a lighter pan would. All right, so this dry aged ribeye is at 140, so I'm gonna take it off. And if you want it medium rare, you want that at about 125 before you rest it. The New York is at 140, coming off. If I can grab it. And 142, 146, a little, probably a little hotter than we wanted, but it will be fine. So now I'm going to let the beef rest, and I'm going to clean the pan, and then throw the pork in, and then uh, we'll set up for our taste test. So those are going to rest for a good 20 minutes, probably 10 on these, and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got our uh, dry aged ribeye, dry aged New York, and our control ribeye aging, or not aging, resting after we cooked it. Now we're going to throw the uh, pork, the dry aged pork tenderloin, we butterfly a couple of them off. And I've got one more clove of garlic here that I'm going to throw in. Oil, salt, pepper, and a little bit of fresh garlic, and that is it. And if you can see, Randy, if you can get in here, you'll start to see that white, that white start to develop on the bottom of that pork. And you'll see that kind of slowly rise. Then we'll flip it over, get the second half, and have her. That looks sweet. Flip it over. Good color, good, good crust on the outside. Ball. Yep, and we're going to go to 145. So we've been cooking the pork for a while. It's at 150 internal, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Let, we're going to let the pork rest. And now we're going to, this is going to be the fun part here. We're going to let the, uh, let me take this off the heat. 
we're going to bring these ribeyes in New York over to the cutting board and we're going to see just how good they are. So let me set this up and then we'll be right back. Here we got the, uh, the Butterfly New York dry aged. We have the dry aged ribeye and again the fat melted off and almost lost the cap. We also have some drunk girls out in the room. So you're hearing some noises that probably don't make a lot of sense to you. Hungry girls. But you're going to hear a lot of ooh ahs here in a second. So, here's the regular ribeye. So I'm just going to angle slice this against the grain. Looks good. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? That looks awesome. Any, uh, that looks the balls. Any regular human being would say that that does look pretty good. Right, Chloe? All right. You're a regular human. Not just Here's good. the New York. We'll go this way with it. Oh, oh it just drops right through. This is going to be really good. Oh, man, that, that really feels good. That looks fantastic. All right, so there is our beef dry aged New York, regular ribeye, dry aged ribeye. Let's bring these pork tenderloins over. We don't have a non dry aged tenderloin to compare to, so keep that in mind. We cook this to 145 internal. A little bit of uh, little bit of maybe a little pink there in the middle. Did you say that's okay now? Absolutely. One, 140 I think. Just check the FDA regs. So here's the pork. So we'll set up at the table. We'll do a little tasting and then we'll be done and just focusing on drinking. First of all, take a bite of the non-dried ribeye. See what you think. Babs, that's you too. Okay. No, that's the dry age. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we cut it a little smaller? Certainly. Thank you. This is the non-dried ribeye? This is the non-dry age. This oh, is the regular ribeye. That's awesome. That's really good. That's really good. So now, dry right piece of the dry age. I'll take this piece right there. Oh, I like that better. Yeah, much better. A lot of different flavor. Yeah. That is the balls. It's very, very good. So now here's a piece of the New York. Try try each try a piece of that. I'm still savoring this piece. Oh right? well, eat faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Mm. I'm definitely picking up a little bit of the cheesy flavor. Yeah, there. there's definitely yeah. the cheese flavor now. So yep. you know, what's, what's the difference on that? So now try a piece of the the pork. This is dry aged pork loin. Mm -hmm. mm. That's pretty damn good too. I can't make my mind up. Mm. Oh, this is really good. What was this one? This one's really good. This here? The dry oh. No, that was pork. There. Pork? This is pork. The pork one's very, very good. This video is definitely not going to do justice for this tasting of this meat. It is just fantastic. All of but it. Like we like to say back east, it is the balls. <laughs> so you had dry aged ribeye versus non dry aged ribeye. Mm. Which one was better? I got to go with the aged. Babs? Yeah. I think so too. So what was good about it? Just the flavoring of it was tenderness. so much better. It's, yeah, the tenderness. It was just, oh. it just had much better flavor. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's not a, a, a bad cut of meat on that board right now. Mm. Um, you just taste it and you're like, mmm. The pork, everything. The pork is really, uh, I'm really, really surprisingly good. good. Well, so yeah, I think the pork is very, very good. And super there's, tender. There's yeah. not a lot of data on dry aged pork, but I think we're going to start. Wow. Yeah. I think there so. Here's to you. Yeah. 
Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Here's to my backyard. <laughs> awesome. My backyard. <laughs> All right. Let's get to drinking. Woo!